before we start uh, I mean uh, integration scenarios what kind of scenarios we come across in uh, real time i mean in the business scenarios where when you are going to a client what kind of scenarios we come across so one of the uh, first scenario uh, as we are aware that your client can have a subscription to only sourcing or only contract management or only slp or only ariba buying or ariba buying and invoicing so there is a possibility that you will be having only on these things also so what will happen in these scenarios and there is also a call in ariba buying and ariba this thing you can also have see a supplier he will only subscribe to ariba catalogs alone without any other uh, subscription so, so let us take first scenario of catalog how it will work this is also called ariba procurement control apc when he subscribe to ariba catalogs alone and he is using any third party uh, erp system for example s4 hana or a ecc so how the workflow will work in this case will be user will log into erp enters the pr requisition screen pr requisition screen probably me 51 n in our case in if it is an sap when he enters this transaction code he clicks one kind of a button which will there add items to pr once you click on that it he will be taken to a screen of ariba catalog screen so in the catalog he will select the item which we have seen yesterday in catalog kit how the catalog items will be displayed along with the price along with the uh, supplier number part id description and image of the item which is purchasing and under which category that item is available all this information will be clicked when he clicked on that catalog item this will also provide more information about that catalog so the supplier name supplier part id when it is available how long it will take to produce if there is any specification that also can be maintained catalog item so ariba catalog he will browse through he will able to find out what kind of items are available and he sells that item he will that how he will select it is called add to cart or cart items once he has finalized all his cart items he will click on proceed so then automatically the line items will be added to the me51n pr screen then rest of the act processes he will complete in erp what is the activity Sub submission of pr and conversion of pr into purchase order so all these activities will be taken care in erp so is this clear i believe there are still some users are using this catalog where it is a big retail industry where they are having a supply database of having lot of catalog item related mostly in retail sector you will come across this they are not using ariba for any other area just to maintain the catalogs they are using ariba so in that scenarios you will find this first step then if a supplier is having only sourcing item so what will happen in that scenario so similarly user will start a pr and he, he then he clicks for submission for an rfq or a next level so as soon as pr is submitted in erp system then in sr posting a request request is created in ariba then the sourcing agent which is nothing but the people who have access to sourcing ariba they will create event or a project depending upon the need and find out the prices for this item suppose he is having sub sourcing and contract module he will price he will find out the prices and he will click on award and then he will create a contract once contract is created he will create a clid contract line item document and he will click on submit to external system then a po will be po depending upon whatever the 
configuration which is there, whether a contract will be created in ECC or a PO is created in ECC, depending upon the uh, integration has taken, this scenario will work as contract in EC or PO in ECC. This is the second scenario where you are not using downstream for your activity. You are only using upstream. So where you are sourcing of a uh, supplier, sorry, sourcing of sourcing will be taken care in Nariba and rest of the activities, PO creation and doing a goods receipt, doing a goods invoice and sending payment to the vendor. All these things will be taken care in your ECC system. This is also one another scenario. Then we will also come across third scenario where SLP. Your supplier is only using SLP for onboarding. Rest of the activities he is not maintaining. So this is a rare case. Uh, suppose for onboarding the supplier, doing a supplier evaluation and supplier risk. So in that situation, so the supplier data is only maintained in Ariba. You are going to push the data to SLP. And once you do the supplier activation and other thing, then the supplier will get synced to your ERP system. So that is a very direct uh, connectivity. You can able to do that. Apart from this, then we call this as a sweet integration. This is nowadays, earlier days, the Ariba was taken as an individual subscription. But with the suit integration, which is having highest benefits, the suppliers are forced to take, not forced, so they are uh, promoted to take suite integration, so which will give more advantages than any other uh, combination. Again, it is not necessary that they take a suit integration, which will have sourcing, contract, SLP, buying and invoicing, catalog, everything as a one suit. They don't need to go immediately. So they don't need to go with module of all these things at a one stage. They can start with sourcing, then slowly with contract, then slowly with SLP. Like that, they can go or they can start with buying and then they develop sourcing. Whatever the convenience of your client, they can able to perform. Uh, they can go by step-by-step -step process also. They can activate one particular model. After a certain period of time, then they can activate another model. So in suit integration, what is the advantage? So the main advantage of suit integration will be common data. So what is common data? So the data in available in upstream can be copied to downstream without any integration. So this is called native integration. We do not do any activity to do the integration from upstream to downstream that Ariba will take care and we don't generally see any of the activity from our side. So Ariba will take care of integration. In other scenarios, we need to maintain the integration either using batch file or web services or connect services. Whereas in suite integrated, the data in upstream can be available in downstream. Similarly, when you have a data in downstream, that uh, data will be available in AppStream also. For example, user data. So user data is maintained in HRs. Here, HRs system, probably a workday. Pinch workday or uh, people soft. There is one more. Uh, any of your solution. That is integrated with your sourcing module, for example. Then the same users can be copied in your uh, downstream also without any uh, integration. Similarly, you are having an S4 system or ECC system. You are maintaining suppliers in third party. Suppliers are maintained in suppliers, uh, your own uh, supplier system, probably MDG or any other system. Then you are pushing the suppliers to Ariba buying. So this is your integration. Then the same sub, uh, supplier, which is also called as a common supplier, in your Ariba sourcing, you can use this common supplier to invite events or responses. This way, the data is shared between upstream and 
downstream without any integration. So that is the advantage of having a suit integration, common data. The suppliers or users which are available in upstream, you can have that. Maybe similarly, units of measurement, commodity codes, all other data will be shared again upstream and downstream without any integration is required. That is the advantage of suit integration and also the logins. So where you see that site navigation, you can navigate with the same username and password. You don't need any additional password. Suppose if you are having this other integration, then you need to have different passwords for different, different activities. Again, we have discussed this already. When you are taking a suite integration, how the casting or billing will be done. Uh, the billing for upstream will be based on a licensed users. That means the people who are having access to creation of a project are some administrative roles where in the administration where you are seeing inventory manager, sorry, uh, invoice manager, procure to pay manager, project manager, all these things will require a licensed project. Whereas the downstream users, downstream users, it could be any number of approvers or the people who have access to create requisitions, which will not consume, consume license. And as per Ariba's strategy, and there is no limit on the number of users. You can have n number of users in your application. So Ariba will not ask for or it will not charge you based on number of users in downstream. Only in upstream, this will be charged. So that is an advantage. So you don't, you're not paying anything. So you have the liberty to give the access to many of the people to start using Ariba as your downstream solution. That way you are taking advantage of taking Ariba. Then one more main advantages of using this Ariba will be network. So in, it is easy for you to communicate with your suppliers who are already on an Ariba network. So you don't need to educate them. They might already exist up life. So by this time, we have a number of suppliers. There is a millions of suppliers. I do not have the count now. Earlier it was there. So there is a millions of suppliers which are already transacting over Ariba network. Then it is easy for your suppliers to communicate or you have a one standard process. Suppose you want to send event to get a prices from the supplier, you can get that. Or you want to send your purchasing documents, purchase orders or contracts to the supplier over a second. And you can also see the status, whether he has seen that or he has acknowledged. Everything will happen in a uh, minutes of time or a fraction of seconds of a time. So that is the main advantage of using Ariba integration. Uh, sorry, Ariba integration. So any doubts so far? Or do you come across any challenges in this? No, sir. Good. So basically, these are all the high-level uh, integration scenarios, how it will happen. So in suit integration, you do not need any third-party integration, whereas the other integration, purpose you are taking sourcing or contracts as a standalone. So to connect between your third party system and with the Ariba system, then you need to have a middle way. So which I have already explained. Once again, I'm explaining if it is a backend system is a your SAP ERP system, then the recommended method is CIG. For non SAP or ERP system, then you have option called batch transfer using ITK now replaced with BTP, or you can build your own custom built middleware. And there is a third party, which is called web services. Again, this connectivity you can use to communicate between, between your upstream, sorry, between Ariba and non Ariba and non systems. Now we will talk about collaborating a supplier. So this is a topic on suit integ uh, sorry, integrations. Now we are going to talk about collaborating with suppliers. Do 
before that, let me check whether we have that in Ariba or not. So when you click on create requisition, so if the supplier collaboration is enabled, what will happen is when you click on create non-catalog item, Okay, enter your item description. Test. Fifteen. Connect add to cart because I do not know the vendor. When I click on proceed, when I click on submit, test. Edit. Need by date, I'll just change the need by date. Now we have extended our precious tool, so we will be getting that. So view the requisition. Actually, once we submit it, so it will go for supplier collaboration. So it will show, it should show me. So here I did not selected any vendors. Let's see if it is working for a pre-collaboration method. So what is pre-collaboration is before you send this information to a supplier. When you before you send to a supplier, it will take for an approval that is called pre collaboration method. Let me see if, if that is the case, if the approval is there. So you will be seeing so that collaboration is not there. Otherwise, what will happen? So you do not have a vendor identified. Do you want to do a supplier collaboration? It will not ask that. Here you will see enable supplier collaboration. What will happen when you click on the supplier collaboration? Then it will ask you to something like in your sourcing project, like you are inviting the participant. You also see a suppliers will be shown here. And you can also create a supplier also from here. If the supplier is not existing in your database, you can click on those suppliers and send for a proposal. So why you are using that supplier collaboration? This is basically in your purchase requisition itself, PR itself. You have find, for example, you have find a contract for an item, for example, a laptop. You have found a contract and workspace is available and the price says is 1000 US dollars. But there was a requirement you are supposed to purchase 10,000 quantity of the laptop. But you do not know whether the supplier will give you additional discount or not. In this case, you can ask, you can create a, uh, you can connect with the supplier and find out, hey, I want to purchase 10,000 laptops. So I expect some additional discount for this particular order. Then the supplier can give you in a different proposal. Yes, if you are buying for uh, 10,000 laptops, I can give you price of 900 US dollars. In this case, what will happen? The PR, he will create. Then there is a button called Enable Supplier Collaboration. 
once we enable it, it will ask you to the select vendor. Then in your line item details, you can ask whatever you want to ask it for it. Can you provide? And you will, the line item will also have line item, price, quantity. Now, the supplier, similar to your sourcing proposals, he will also see Ariba buying and invoicing. Suppose the supplier are already registered. So what will happen? The supplier will log in into supplier logs into network. Then he sees Ariba net buying and invoicing. Then payr is coming for. He will log in into your PR. Then he will enter the price 900 and he clicks on submit. Now as a buyer, buyer sees the proposal, proposal and accept the proposal. At this stage, collaboration is ended. Now he will submit the PR for 10,000 into 900 US dollars. And then again, it will go for an approval process. If it is defined, then PO will get created. Is this clear? Why we do the supplier collaboration? So Ariba is so flexible that even in the time of PR creation, you can enable supplier. Uh, in this case, the minimum requirement is there is one group, uh, minimum of supplier collaboration group, where you need to be a member of that group to do this supplier collaboration. It is not only the members in that group will be sorry, allowed to create the supplier collaboration. Is this clear? Suppose you do not have a by uh, sourcing, uh, sourcing. So you want to make this functionality use, then you can use this one. So something like this. Then the second, uh, I will need to explain collaboration stages. I think this I can show, but let me go back to Ariba screen. If I can show this or not. When I go to Manage approval process. Uh, to be frankly speaking, I have not seen supplier collaboration in real time. Only doing learning purpose only I have seen because this is a little bit complex. So mostly the people will use the sourcing only. I'll click on research requisition. Let's select one of the approval process. Last time I have seen here, but now they modified. Let me go to parent again. This is what I want to show. Here you are seeing that pre collaboration, collaboration, post collaboration. So when you click on pre collaboration, you can define your approval processes for pre collaboration. Before the PR is created and it sends for a collaboration, you can create an approval process. For example, you do not want everyone to send for a collaboration. Then you create an approval flow where your manager will approve it. So then you define a rule here that add supervisor or add manager, and then that person will get approved. Then you can also define during collaboration. So what is during collaboration means once the supplier has been uh, submitted his proposal, so then you do this one as part of your collaboration. Once the supplier is uh, you got the collaboration request when you're resubmitting collaboration, all these things can be 
So what is this condition? Approvals can ask for a rule specific escalation period. Okay, that is during collaboration. And post collaboration means, as I mentioned, once you got the price confirmation from your supplier and you accepted that proposal, again, you can go for based on your PR limits, so how you want the approval force to be triggered. That can be configured in this case. Suppose if you are following this collaboration method, then you are going to design this for different approval at different stages also. That is what in your uh, approval collaborations will be having it. So now let's talk about collaboration stages. Once the pair, you can have approvals, approvals before you submit for Supplier collaboration, yes, see. Then after you confirm this one, post collaboration, which is nothing but standard form which you are going to create. In additionally, you're just creating an approval flow before you submit for a supplier collaboration. That is collaboration. Now your company also have a policy that any PR submitted for greater than twenty thousand US dollars, then I need three quotations to be attached to the PR. Or I also have a policy that any PR more than 20,000, you should get four quotations out of which at least three, you have to receive the response. That means you need to send this quotation to four suppliers and at least three suppliers have to respond to your quotation. They can reject the they can reject or they can provide prices, but at least they need to respond. It. So that is your company policy, which is called M bits and policy. So if you are creating this approval flower, again I will take you to the approval process. So under policies, you are having create new. So here you are going to see this calculation of rule on bits and kind. N bits and kind. So this is the policy. You can import this policy using uh, procurement manager. You can define what is your policy. Suppose here you can also decide for company code or for a commodity code. So what is the number of bits? How many number of bits should, should receive the response? Like this, you can maintain. If the PR satisfies, for example, commodity code 1210, if the value, I'm going to give here, value is more than 50,000, greater than, greater than 20,000, this is the policy which you are going to incorporate. Then you are going to mention, you have to receive minimum four bits and responses to two bits. Like that, you can prepare your file different, different for different combination and you can accept, import this file, then this N bits and policy, when it's, uh, when this policy is uh, implemented, when you're creating a PR with this commodity code, then system will Without that, you will not able to submit the PR. It means says, as per N bits and policy, did not meet. So then you will have that collaboration enabled. So in this case, what you are going to do is you will start collaborating and then you are going to add suppliers. In our previous case, we have just validated with only one supplier. But in this case, I'm going to add supplier one, supplier two, supplier three, and supplier four. Similarly, all these four suppliers will receive a notification asking to provide that bid and they submit the bid. For example, each supplier is giving a bid of 1,000, 950, 970, 980, something like that. So then you choose any one of the suppliers. So for example, you are selecting this one. It could be any reason. You are accepting the proposal, accepting proposal from supplier three. Then you are ending the collaboration and submitting the PR with quantity into 970, the price submitted by the this supplier, then you are going to proceed and accept it. So this is again, when someone is looked out, they will able to find out that this was sent to four suppliers and you got the four responses and you are going to perform. In normally, this activity in your normally in S4HANA or ECC when you are performing, 
you are going to attach this to your PO screen, purchase order screen with price comparison from all the vendors. So the approvals in your PO, they will verify this information and they will proceed with uh, approval. Suppose if you are having collaboration functionality, you can do this in the system and system approvals can. Then now after the collaborating, you are submitting the PR for an approval. So the approval can verify if you are matching whatever the policies of your company are being maintained. So that's basically called bits and policy. Suppose you are not using collaboration facility and you are only using sourcing as your well, uh, event, then the sourcing once it is done, once award is done, then the copy will be exported in a kind of a PDF file or something with all the history showing that and that will be attached to your as an attachment. When you are doing in PR attachment, there is tick mark which shows that visible attachment. Here it will ask you to load the file. Once you click on the attachment will be added. Here it will give you a tick mark. If you are setting the tick mark, then the right that attachment will be sent to the supplier. If you don't send this tick mark, then this is purely internal. The attachment only internal and it is not visible to the supplier. So that way you can add attachment to the PR and the PR approvers can verify whatever the uh, prices have been uh, agreed. Uh, even that is also, I can able to show or not. Let me see. I'll go back to the child island. Edit. See here, you see this attachment. When you say, uh, add attachment, for example, see, you are able to you are seeing. So when I am adding the attachment. I'm just taking some slip item visible to supplier on the purchase order. When you're selecting this, suppose you want to spend a specification to the purchase order, then you're attaching that file, and when you're clicking it, then the specification will go to the supplier. But when you select something internal, you do not select this check mark and click on OK, then that item can be added to your attachment. So this is not allowed to choose file. I added a supplier CA file that is not allowed. Okay. So, like that, you can add. Similarly, you can also add a comment. Suppose if it is internally, this is approved by project manager. Something like that, you are adding a text. If you are removing this, then this comment is only internal. If you are adding this, the comment will be visible to supplier. Similarly, you are adding multiple attachments. You can decide what attachment need to be sent to the supplier, what attachments are internal. So that way you are controlling the visibility to the external suppliers. So go to the notes. So we'll have a look at if I can able to show where I can add the supplier. Save.
I will find out where we can see these policies, where you can import and export your policies. 